one of the things that you everybody has to understand, new users, old users, old guards, anybody, is that the routing that's done inside the Mio console is done by you. We don't do anything for you, with the exception of the templates. But your inputs have to be routed somewhere, and your output have to be routed somewhere. Nothing goes by itself. Now, with that, gives you a lot of power and a lot of flexibility. What I have on the screen here is a little page from our help manual, which you can grab from the help pull-down menu over here, help, Mio console help. And it shows the basic signal flow of the routing model. Now, basically, the first element you have is the actual, you know, mobile I.O. hardware, which is your 2882 or ULN2. Now, your inputs go into the version 5 mixer. Now, the inputs are either digitals or analogs, so either ADATs or AESCBUs or, you know, whatever. Anything that you actually plug into the box, consider an input, and go to the mixer. Now, if you want that channel to actually hit your sequencer of choice, like Logic, Cubase, you know, we're just going to call them your DAW at this point, but your DAW could be any of the major applications that you want to use. You actually have to explicitly route them to FireWire, and I'll show you that in just a few moments. Once it's routed to FireWire, it ends up as the input channels in your DAW of choice. Now, to get out of your DAW of choice, they come back as DAW channels, or DAW return channels. They kind of re-hit into the version 5 mixer, and those get physically cabled to your outputs that come out of the box. Now, let me just show you this on a template. It's much easier to see on a template. So I'm going to go to File, Template. Let's just show the, the, uh, the ULN2 basic setup. All right. I'll go ahead and look at this now. So what we have here, we have two analogs, two digitals, and all ADATs. So that's pretty much every input you could have on the ULN2 is now being uh, configured and routed here. And you can see that my voice coming in on the first channel here. Now, for these channels to get to something, to your DAW, like your logic, you have to actually have to use the FireWire send or the FireWire returns to send those signals to, to logic. And that's done in two spots. We have five of these FireWire out, the direct out at the very, very top. Now, what the first spot does here is it goes ahead and sends these channels pre-processing. We have all these different insert effects now. We can use EQs, different plugins, sends, graphs, macros, all sorts of fun stuff. And you can choose if you want to have those routed before the inserts or after. And they're routed these FW or FireWire channels. And there's 18 of them. You actually can configure anything the way you want to. So channel 1 does not have to be input 1. It could be any input that you tell it to. But again, unless you're using a template, you have to tell it. Let's go ahead, let's look at a different template for a second. Let's look at the uh, Vintage Reverb. Okay, so we've got an input channel here coming from Analog 1. So there's your input module here. It's going through a little bit of character. Okay, and you'll notice that we have a Mio Strip plug-in here going to a Reverb bus. Okay, and here's our Sends and Returns section. Now I have one FireWire return here. This is my direct out, FireWire number one. And you see it's post-processing. It's going to be grabbing the Mio strip and the reverb send and going in and send that to your DAW channel, you know, DAW input number one. So whatever you're using is going to be channel one number one, input number one. You'll also notice here that on the actual reverb channel, on the Halo verb, we have a direct out. So we're actually going to be able to record the reverb channel as well as the input channel which is really kind of cool. And the flexibility also comes in if you say, you know what, I don't want to, I actually want to record another track of my vocals, but what I don't want to do it with the reverb. I want it to get it dry. Maybe I'm going to use a different reverb later. I don't want to commit. Great. So use the direct out at the beginning of the chain. So pre-processing and choose automatic. Now what automatic does, it routes to the most, the closest and next available firewire. So in this case, it's going to be nine. So auto goes to nine. So this is the kind of stuff that you just can't do any other way. If you've got thing implicitly routed a certain spot like input number one goes to track number one you can't do this kind of stuff so you get a lot of flexibility and it's all done through firewire now how about the outputs how does things come out of you know come out of your daw so this is one of the output assignments here okay so we're taking the input from daw one and two that's the actual output of your core audio application again here's our console help core audio application here comes out through the driver into the mixer so here it is coming out of your program daw one and two it's coming in through this strip and its output is listed below. Now, in the Mio mixer, everything has to go to a bus, okay? We're just going to simply hardwire this guy to the main bus. And my main bus is right here, okay? My main bus has an output of analog 1 and 2, and I could certainly mult it to other places that you'll be learning out and about in other videos. Once that's being sent to analog 1 and 2, 
I could even re- I could record this and send this back to my DAW of choice, back to Logic, and record that, or even use the record panel. Again, using FireWire. FireWire is just a way to send audio. Again, send anything from the mixer into your application of choice, record it. When you're done, send anything out of your application through DAW channels. Assign those DAW channels to a bus, assign the bus to a physical output, and you're golden. That is the routing model for FireWire in version 5.